Will there ever be a video that I make that you won't hear the sounds of traffic in the background constantly? <laughs> I recently posted on my Instagram the link to my YouTube channel, and I don't know why, but that probably was the scariest thing I've done in a long time, which is so sad to say because it's not even that big a deal and no one probably even cares that I have a YouTube channel or that I enjoy making random videos for fun. But for probably my entire life, I've been trying to hide the things that I love in fear of other people judging me or in fear of other people making fun of me. God forbid someone that I went to high school with saw one of my videos and thought I was weird. God forbid someone in my family saw and then showed my mom or showed my brother. I, I don't know, just all like really, really stupid things that I tell myself in my mind or thoughts that I have. And when I posted it to my Instagram and I told all of my peers and all of my friends and family and followers, I had so much built up anxiety about it. Like literally my heart was racing. But after I did that, I felt so free. Like I felt like I had freed myself from my creative chains and I finally like wasn't living a lie anymore. And if you are some kind of artist or creator or honestly anybody that does anything in their life, then you probably know exactly how I feel as well. If you've ever had a strong passion for something, but you were too afraid to show other people or share your work because you thought it was embarrassing, or you thought that it wasn't cool enough, or you thought people were gonna think you were kind of weird. I wanted to make this video for a couple of reasons. First, I wanted to open up the conversation about why it is we are so afraid to share our passions in life with our friends, our family, our peers, or strangers on the internet. If we all are feeling this way, why are we still doing it? Second, I wanted to get everything off my chest about how I've been feeling just internally about my fear and my anxiety about my YouTube channel and about why it took me so long to even do this in the first place. And third, I wanna encourage other people to get out of their own head and do whatever the fuck makes them happy. And I wanna start off with that. For me, there have always been five main fears that have held me back from doing the things that I love to do, such as making videos for YouTube. My first experience actually recognizing the fears that I have was while reading this book called Big Magic. And for anybody that knows me, I've probably recommended this to you because it is seriously my favorite book of all time. Even if you're not an artist or a creator or anything, I feel like everyone should read this book. I'm not really gonna get into too much about it, but essentially it talks about the ways that we hold ourselves back creatively and how we can become inspired, how we can stay motivated and how we can just become more creative people in general. This book essentially was the first person to call me out on the big baby that I am and the excuses that I hide behind. <laughs> and if you're interested in reading this book, I actually left a link down in the description box if you guys wanna check it out. So let's get into the five main fears that I've kind of identified when it comes to sharing your art. And just to preface, when I say art, I don't actually mean like a fine art medium. It could be anything. It could be a hobby that you have. It could be something that you do creatively. It could be literally any passion you have but I'm gonna call it art for the sake of this video. The first fear, and probably the main fear that I struggle with, is you're afraid your art is embarrassing. Like I said, this is my number one fear and really the main reason why I never share any of my work or my art online, because I am super afraid of being ridiculed or embarrassed or someone thinking I'm weird or kooky. Did I just say kooky? But the bottom line is no one actually cares. And that sounds bad when I say no one actually cares. People probably just think it's totally normal. Something that you're so afraid and anxious about to share, people will probably look at it and be like, yeah, whatever, like, that's cool, bitch, like, do you. They either think it's fine, it's normal, they're indifferent, or you're just another tile on their Instagram feed. And again, that sounds really bad, and I'm not saying that no one actually cares about what you do, but I mean, it's not that big a deal in other people's eyes as it is in your eyes. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I decided to shut my phone off for an entire month in October and the entire time I was just thinking, wow, all these people are probably wondering where I am. Like, they're probably like, oh, where'd Kelsey go? She's MIA. And I went to go turn my phone on and was so eager to see all the text messages I was gonna have, all the Instagram DMs, like, hey girl, where you been? Haven't heard from you in a while. And 
I got four text messages. Two of them were spam. And one of them was a man texting me asking if I wanted to sell my home. So that just goes to shows the world doesn't revolve around you and people really don't pay that much attention to you that you think they do. <laughs> Literally no one even realized I was gone. My brother actually said, you know, you could be dead and no one would know, which I guess is kind of scary. The main point I'm trying to make is that you can post whatever you want. Most people won't even think twice about it. So why not just fucking post it? And if you didn't notice, this video is not made for kids. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Take comfort in the fact that if you post something, more likely than not, people aren't gonna think twice about it. So why should you get so worked up and anxious about posting it your damn self? Everyone is so wrapped up in their own shit, thinking about themselves, and they're worrying about what other people are thinking about them. We're all in the same anxiety boat. So I'm here to tell you, the people you're most worried about are not sitting around spending their time shitting on your life because you like to draw portraits of dogs. And if anything, once you post it, people are gonna think it's so cool and you're gonna be shocked at the amount of support you receive from your friends and family and peers. Seriously, when I posted it, I thought I was gonna get a lot more, not backlash, but just people being like, oh, that's like interesting, like kind of unsure. But the amount of support and the amount of messages I received from people that I didn't even speak to ever was amazing and Honestly, it made me cry a little bit. I was surprised that some of the people that messaged me saying that they supported me and that they thought it was a really cool or that they thought my art was interesting. And I guarantee that you'll find the same. The second fear is that you're afraid your art isn't good enough. Art is subjective. That's why it's called art. Even if it's not a painting or a drawing or music, creativity in general is subjective. There is gonna be people that love your art and think it's the best thing they've ever seen in their entire life. And there's gonna be some people that think your art looks like dog shit. And even if someone does tell you that they hate your art, which nine times out of 10, they probably wouldn't even say that to your face. I bet there's gonna be 10 people that think your art is fucking awesome. And you're not doing it for the one person that hates you. You're doing it for the 10 people that enjoy it and that wanna see more. Also, when you start anything, uh, you're not gonna be good at it and you're only gonna get better if you practice and you can't practice if you quit and you never start something. So if you actually wanna get better and improve your skills and be really good at it and like put out great fucking content, oh my God, I have to stop cursing. I just feel really passionate about this. Then you actually have to do it. And one day you will be really good, but you're never gonna get there unless you don't start and you give up and you don't keep doing it. Just do it. Next is you're afraid you're not pretty enough or talented enough or funny enough. And the list goes on, of course. I could probably name you five very famous people right now that I don't think are that pretty or talented or funny, and they are doing just fine in their life. David Spade, Adam Sandler, Charlie D'Amelio, Kourtney Kardashian, Jeff Dunham. I could bet you're probably at least a little bit prettier or a little bit ta more talented or a little bit more I don't know, something than at least one of those people. But Kelsey, no one actually cares about my art and it's not benefiting anyone. And my life is so boring and uninteresting. Let's say you live in a small town in the middle of nowhere and you wanna be a vlogger. Yes, you can think of it as I live this boring life and there's nothing to do and nothing to show. But what you do have is a life that no one else is living. All of those billions of people that live in cities have probably never known what it's like to live in a small rural town like yours, which means you are giving them something that they don't already have, an insight into your kind of life. And there are people out there that are gonna be interested in it. Even if you don't think your life is interesting, there is someone out there that thinks it does. You just gotta make content for that person. The point is, is that you have something to offer. If you know what it is that you're offering, eventually those people will find you. Even if the thing that you're offering is as simple as entertainment. Entertainment can literally be anything. You can make videos about anything. But if you're providing someone entertainment, that's a benefit. I'd like to think my content is pretty pointless, but I would like to think that people are being entertained. Next, you're afraid it's already been done before and it's been done better and bigger. So what's the point in even trying? The great thing about art is that everything has been done before. There is not a single person out there that has created something new and not drawn inspiration from others. Even the greatest artists had teachers. They learned from other people. They learned from their favorite artists and their inspirations. So don't beat yourself up if at first you are either copying or taking pointers from the people that inspire you. 
that's what art is. Of course, you need to adapt it and make it your own, but eventually as you go on, your aesthetic and your style will grow. And eventually you'll look back and you'll see how different your content is from someone else's. But you can't start out of thin air. Don't beat yourself up for being unoriginal. How many damn little girls are you seeing on YouTube doing what I eat in a day vlogs? The answer, too damn many. And a lot of them are very successful. But you know what? There were thousands of them doing it before and there's gonna be thousands of them to start it today and there's gonna be thousands of them to start it tomorrow and next week. But if that's what you like to do, fucking do it. It may look like everyone's doing it, but there's enough to go around. Just because someone takes a piece of the pie doesn't mean that it's taking away a piece from you. There is enough creativity to go around. And finally, you're afraid you're too old or it's too late. Uh, this has been my excuse for a long time and the famous excuse of every middle-aged person that thinks they're hopeless and doesn't wanna do anything new with their life. No offense, guys. For 10 years, I've been telling myself it's too late to do YouTube, which is stupid because I'm only 25 years old. But when I was 20 years old, I thought, look at these 15 year olds that are doing way better than me and they're so successful and they're so much prettier than me and they have better hair and... But me making the excuse that I was too old and it was too late was just an excuse I was hiding behind. And 25 year old me is wishing that I started 10 years ago and wishing that I started five years ago or wishing that I started last year. Like time is only gonna go on and you're gonna wish you had started the day that you wanted. It's never too late to do anything. There's grandmas out there that are starting new hobbies and breaking world records every single day. There are billions of suburban white moms that are now realizing that they can make a living off of blogging. And now they're teaching you how to make gluten-free, allergy-free cupcakes and how to properly change a diaper. If they can do it, you can do it. In my opinion, one of the reasons why we have these spheres is because we see all of the young people who have all this talent and beauty because they have the resources that I didn't have back then. And just seeing those people do it makes me think, is it too late for me to do it? No. They came out of the womb doing somersaults and cartwheels. Like, I did not. And they have, like, Pinterest and Instagram, whereas I had 17 magazine. Like, when I was 15, I did not look like that. I was a literal hobbit. So, you know what? I don't look at them. Just keep reminding yourself that you are exactly where you need to be in this stage of your life. And if you wait any longer, you're gonna regret that you didn't start sooner. Because I definitely do. I don't really know how to structure this video, so I'm just gonna now talk about myself. Because what is a YouTube video if I don't talk about myself constantly? From a very young age, I have always wanted to do cinematography. I used to force my little brother to make little stupid videos with me. <laughs> I used to dress him up. I used to tell him what to do. I would direct, produce, act. Mm, I did it all and he hated me for it. But I knew that in the future, I wanted to do something with video. I initially wanted to make music videos, which actually is something that I think would be really interesting just cause I feel like cinematography and music together just like produces like maximum emotion. Like I wanna make you cry. And when I was younger, I was less embarrassed. Like I didn't care. I had nothing to lose. I would show my family, my friends, everyone. I took a class in high school where I made videos and I showed them to the entire class and I entered them in competitions. Like I just didn't care. I was off the rails. And then as I slowly got older, I started to become more self-aware which I guess is a good thing. And I started having these thoughts about, this is socially unacceptable. And it's weird that I have these thoughts in my head about why YouTube and video making is so socially unacceptable because Instagram is essentially the same thing. But I think the difference is Instagram is slightly less vulnerable. You're not directly speaking to a camera. Like right now I'm sitting in my own room by myself. I need to just now think it's comfortable to talk to myself. What's also interesting is I've always considered myself like a super outgoing and open book kind of person. Doing something like this is so uncomfortable for me still. I don't get it myself. And I always thought I was the only person feeling this way, but I've talked to lots of other people that feel the exact same way. So it's a thing for myself too that I need to learn 
to just not care and do whatever I want and not be afraid to be my true weird self. <laughs> so going from where I was creatively to now where I am in this mindset of creating YouTube videos, what exactly has changed? Well, for starters, the massive anxiety and uncertainty around this global pandemic that we are currently experiencing. I think everyone has been in, in a weird position where we're kind of figuring out like what makes us happy? What can we do at home by ourselves while in isolation that we enjoy doing? What is something that I've wanted to do for such a long time but I didn't have time or I didn't have the energy or I was kind of lost in my path in life? Not only that, just this whole attitude around, you know what, fuck it. The world might end, I might be in quarantine for the rest of my life, so fuck it. I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do, and I'm not gonna care what other people think, and I'm gonna do what makes me damn happy. <laughs> this all going along with me kind of coming of age. I am now having a quarter life crisis where I need to figure out, do I like my career? Do I like where I'm living? Do I like where I'm at in my life? Am I happy with myself? And I've been realizing that doing things like this and doing other things that make me happy and spending time with the people that actually make me happy. And it took me my entire life to realize all of that. So I hope that at least one person watching this video, like don't wait too long to do the things that you wanna do. Do it now. Don't care what other people think. I also wanna let you know that it's okay to not share everything with the world. Sometimes art is just for you to make you happy and that's okay and you don't need to share something for it to be real. But if you want to get out of your comfort zone and you wanna face your fears or if you want to be more confident in your art, then I would challenge you and encourage you to share it. Share it with your mom because she's gonna tell you everything looks great. Share it with your friends because they'll tell you everything looks great, but they might give you some critiques. Share it with the world and I guarantee you, you're gonna get way more support than you think. Do whatever the hell you want. It's your life. Just fucking do it. Just be, make yourself happy. It's 2020. Just, there's nothing else that we have unless you are happy. So screw it. And thanks to everybody who's been supporting me over the last couple of months and all of my crazy ideas. You all know who you are and I appreciate every single one of you. I'm so blessed to have you guys in my life. I hope you guys enjoyed this aggressive rant and I hope to see you again next Monday for another video. The last video of 2020, I'm so excited. 2021 is gonna be, well, it's gonna be a hell of a lot better than this year was. All right, thanks again, guys, bye.